welcome back to my channel. If you are new here or you just happen to stop by, I am Bianca and sometimes I like to make casual videos about my experience as an academic advisor. Um, I do work at an HBCU. I like to document my experience because one thing that I learned in the two short months that I was enrolled in my doctoral program is that when there is a gray area in research, those are often the best research topic. If you've ever Googled or typed in YouTube academic advising, there really isn't a lot of um, thorough videos in my opinion. You know, you get a few here and there, but for someone to really sit down and talk about their experience, I've only seen a few. So I definitely would like to become one of those few individuals who like to make videos on their experience as an academic advisor. And today I'd like to talk about my experience as an academic advisor within an HBCU setting. Before we go any further, please, please like this video, please subscribe and please comment below so we can get some conversation going down below in the comment section. I love to hear you guys' um, experiences and your questions and comments and oftentimes when I get a question or comment, I make a separate video based off of that question or comment. So definitely put those below if you have any. So academic advising within an HBCU setting. I've been in my advising position for over a year now. And like I said, I work at an HBCU in a university setting and I absolutely love it. Based off this experience here, I wish that I would have attended an HBCU during my undergraduate and graduate studies. I think it just would have been better for me in several different ways. So of course there's the surface level, which is seeing your peers and colleagues who look just like you pursuing their dreams and academic success. It is so encouraging. And I'm just so proud of all those students whenever I'm walking around because I have to get my steps in. <laughs> Or, you know, when students come into my office for advising sessions or just, you know, general inquiries, I just love seeing young adults who look like me reaching for their dreams because there was definitely a time where people who looked like us did not have these same academic opportunities. So it's really important to be grateful and it's really important to, now that I'm in the position that I'm in, inspire those who are trying to get to where I'm at academically. If you've ever attended an HBCU or visited, there is just some type of vibe in the air. That's the best way that I can describe it. That you feel where you just want to see your peers do well. And not only am I inspired by the young adults on campus, but I'm also inspired by my colleagues. Um, they're so intelligent. They're such problem solvers. Um, they they oftentimes have the best interest of the student, but they're just so intelligent because not only are you just this information base, but higher education is always changing. So these people are taking in new information every single day and distributing out, distributing out, and they're so thorough and they're so detail oriented. And they just inspire me to work harder, research harder, and study harder. For the benefit of the student, but I also feel a little bit of pressure from my colleagues because, damn, they're <laughs> my colleagues are dope. And, you know, people of color doing the thing. So I love that. We're all educated and so well-spoken, vocal so opinionated like I love it for the students oftentimes you'll hear me on my videos refer to them as the babies because I just feel for them and as an african-american woman I have definitely had some struggles um and I wish that when I went to college I had more of a support system, like academic support to assist me because I really struggled. I had a really hard time figuring out time management, how to study, when to study, 
balancing a social life with my studies, um, the importance of connecting with my academic advisor or any type of academic support, um, getting support from any other groups that they may have offered on campus. Just having that support base, I did not have. And I wish that I had it because I felt like I wouldn't have struggled as much. It took me a long time to get my bachelor's and my master's degree. I graduated when I was 25, I believe. So it definitely took me some time. And I feel like I could have been more of a four-year student if I had that support. But, you know, things happen for a reason. And I actually think that I know the reason. Um, it's kind of full circle for me. A lot of times when these students come to my office and, you know, we're maybe discussing some issues that may be happening or some struggles they may be experiencing, some challenges in their lives that are, you know, a direct effect of maybe their academic struggles. A lot of times I can 100% relate and identify with these students because I've been there. And that is the beauty of an HBCU. Like, I... 100% can empathize with these students because I've been in their exact spots, nine out of 10. So I know how to empathize. I know how to talk to them. And I can give suggestions on how we can move forward from this point. We can move forward from this point because I want to do everything I can to assist the student and be, and be a hand for them. And if I can't give them a definite answer or you know, track to success, then I want to get you to somebody who can. I'm also a resource center as well. From an advisor standpoint, why is advising, effective advising, so important in an HBCU setting? Support. That is just one strong word that I can use and that I can offer in this conversation. Support. Students, um, who attend historically black colleges need support. A lot of times, like myself, they're first generation college students. A lot of times they may not have somebody at home who may be able to help them when they have questions about like financial aid or, hey, you know, do you have any pointers of how I can study for this test? Like they may not have those resources at home. So it's super important for them to be supported at their university and academic advisors are one of the first points of contacts and constant points of contacts they should be for students i feel like first is admissions to get the student actually enrolled and then it's their advisor they need to have somebody there it's great for retention and if a student doesn't have an advisor and needs support they may either flunk out or fail and they may, they may not come back. Like, it's really that crucial. If you do your research, academic advising is just, there's just no cookie cutter way to advise a student. And there are actually some advising styles offered online and in textbooks. I tend to pull from um, each style or maybe even a mix of them when I'm advising a student, depending on what they may need from me support wise, but in my opinion, I feel like there should be a special type of advising style for students who attend HBCUs um, because they need so much more support in my opinion. They also need to be self-sufficient. So one thing that I'm working on as an advisor is trying to figure out ways to assist students in a way that's nurturing because they need that, but also encourages self-sufficiency. What does that look like? Well, if a student comes into my office and they need assistance with registering, and maybe they're a freshman coming to talk to me, and maybe they're, you know, they just really need, I can just tell they need a little bit more assistance. They're first generation college students. Mom might've just dropped them off. What I'm going to do with that student is we're gonna sit down and we're gonna to register together. I'm going to show them how to do it. And then I'm gonna to say to them, next time, I want you to try to register yourself. I'll follow up with them in an email 
and give them instructions on how to do so so they can reference that and I'll also let them know if you need any assistance when the next time that you register let me know but also let me know if you're able to register just so I can double check you know what I mean just support but also set them up in a way where they'll be able to be able to do it on their own later a lot of times students who attend HBCUs come from very humble beginnings um, so they may not be able to afford to pay out of pocket so you know as an advisor I can't really advise them on you know their financial aid I'm not really too trained in that but I know a department and a contact who can assist them um, if a student is struggling academically then I'll definitely reach out to them because I get notifications about it. And I'll reach out to them and I'll check in, make sure everything is okay. They just, HBCU students, they just, they need more support. And as an advisor, I'm happy to assist with that. And it's an, a great experience overall. Like I genuinely love working at an HBCU. It makes me so proud. I'm so proud of the students who attend our college because there's nothing that you can really do in terms of the cars that you're dealt with in life, but you don't have to necessarily sink. You don't have to make those, make this a staple for your life. You can do things to improve your life. And in my opinion, going to school is a great way to do so. I'm not from the best area at all, but I can tell you one thing. When I went to college and graduated, that was the best thing that I ever could have done because it gives me the credentials to be in places and workplaces that, you know, not only allow me to live more comfortably, but I can now talk and encourage students who were in the same position that I was. So that's my experience as an advisor within an HBCU setting. If you guys are advisors or you advise or any type of academic support within an HBCU setting, please comment below. And if you have any other questions or anything like that, I'm more than happy to help. Thanks for watching. Bye.